David here from Fig Boot on Pins. Uh, 2015 was the year for me when my casual interest in fountain pens turned into a major hobby slash obsession. Uh, the fountain pen bug bit me this year and, and it bit rather hard. Uh, close to the beginning of the year I began my acquisition and education phase where I did tons of research and bought lots of different pens and really tried to um, enjoy the process as I was going along and doing that. Uh, so I also started journaling my pens and writing down my feelings and observations uh, about each one as well and what I liked and what I didn't like as I went along. And, and I think that my, my tastes uh, uh, refined over time and it was nice to discover what I did like about certain pens and what I didn't like about certain pens and then um, my collection reflected that. So about every three months I would write and compile a list of my top 10 current favorite pens in my collection. And since my collection was growing at such a rapid pace that these lists really varied as the year went on. But what I, I feel they do show is a progression. Uh, the, at the beginning of the year there was beginner pens. Uh, and then at the middle of the year I started to move into some of the intermediate pens. And then at near the end of this year started acquiring some higher end pens. And so I, I don't anticipate revising my top 10 list every three months like I did this year. Uh, but in going back over these lists, I found it really interesting how the list changed uh, as I discovered what I, I liked and, and didn't like in a fountain pen. And I wanted to share that progression. So without further ado, here are my top 10 pens for 2015. So after about three months of collecting, I decided to make my first top 10 list. And here we go. This is what it was. At number 10, we have the Platinum Balance, which is a step up from the Preppies. Uh, and it, it's a nice little pen. That It writes very nicely. Uh, and it has a, a nice gold-colored nib. And is a, a, a decent pen. The next one on the list was the... Preppy, the Platinum Preppy. This is one that actually came in a bottle of Noodler's Ink, but I have a number of them. Uh, I have the markers as well. I know they're not necessarily preppies, but the markers are, are very well, and I use those on a regular basis. But for a, um, a, a very, very inexpensive pen, a pen that's under $4, $2.99, something like that, uh, that it writes very well. Next on the list is the Lamy Safari. This particular one means a lot to me because I picked it up on a trip when we were in Paris and so we were underneath the Louvre and there was a stationery store uh, in the uh, the mall that was underneath the Louvre and I walked in there and saw these safaris and so this was the actual this is the first fountain pen that I actually purchased in a store so it uh, it writes well uh, and it means a lot to me as well. And I kind of like the black nib on the uh, the black section. So the black nib on, on here is nice. So coming in at number seven was a, a bit of a step out for me, a bit of a step out of my comfort zone. And that was this Conklin Herringbone pen. Uh, I was looking for something that I could... I was getting a little tired of black inks and some blue inks and wanted to step out and kind of... Uh, have something that would uh, play a little bit nicer or look really nice with a different colored ink and so I, I picked up this particular pen and a bottle of J. Herbin, uh a purple, I know purple isn't necessarily the color, I forgot the name of the exact color, but uh, ink that matches this well and it's uh, a little flashier than I, had, uh, than I had owned previously but it actually performs very well uh, and, and writes very well so that's a came in at number seven. So at number six I have the Parker Urban and this means something to me because I was part of a Reddit gift exchange right at the end of 2014 and uh, the, my, uh, I said that I was interested in fountain pens and the person got me this gift set 
uh, with this urban in it. And I use this pen uh, on a regular basis at work for a long time. So uh, I have some fondness because it was the, the first fountain pen that I had that I was really my, my daily carry that I used on a regular basis. And so I, uh, it's comfortable. Uh, it has a nice weight to it. And I, I learned to enjoy it. was my first uh, converter fountain pen and so it was one of those things I, I kind of learned to love the the process of filling up the uh, filling up the the pen and inking it up and so I enjoyed doing that with my my urban coming in at number five is the Caveco Skyline Sport uh, this is a, a great little pen and I mean little because it's probably one of the smallest in my collection when it is uh, uh, when it is capped but uh, the, the nib on this pen is amazing. This is probably at the time the smoothest nib that I owned and when I got this one I kind of grew to realize what smooth really meant and how some of the different nibs could feel significantly different. So they don't normally come with this clip, you buy that separate, but the Caveco Sport was um, something that I, I really enjoyed. Coming in at number four is something that I think is a little bit underrated that doesn't get talked about that lot uh, that much is the Lamy Next. Uh, someone uh, at the end of last year gave me a couple of fountain pens for Christmas and uh, they gave me two that weren't the greatest of pens but they gave me this Lamy Next as well. Uh, they didn't know anything about fountain pens. I think they were just randomly searching for pens to get people and, uh, and ended up giving me this one. And it's one that performs very well and I like very much kind of has a, a metal body and then a, a plastic cap and the standard Lamy nib with a rubber section but uh, I enjoyed using this one a great deal. So then we have number three coming in at number three is the Pilot Metropolitan uh, and I've done a review on this one on my channel but it is one that uh, was a pen that really got me um, interested you know, it really made me feel that you could get something of quality for the um, you know for the fifteen dollar price point and it was one of those things that I could re you know really understood what's the difference between a, a cheap fifteen dollar pen and one that uh, has some decent quality to it so I, I learned a lot from this plus it's a great writer coming in at number two is the very first fountain pen that I owned, which is a Lamy All-Star. Uh, I have a, a review of this one on my channel as well. And uh, uh, that uh, I had a friend at work that was interested in fountain pens and showed me his. And so I went up and, and purchased my own. And this is kind of what got me interested in fountain pens uh, as a whole. And then coming in at number one was the Twisby Diamond 580. Uh, this was... The, at the time the most expensive pen that I had purchased and I had done a lot of research into what was the, the next level pen that I wanted up from things like the uh, the All-Star and the Safari and the Metropolitan and uh, I, I really looked into this and did a lot of research and ended up choosing the, the Diamond 580 and really wasn't disappointed because this was the first pen that really got me interested in fountain pens because it, it once I got it I, I it was just extraordinarily cool it had a very high cool factor loved writing with it loved the piston mechanism uh, the only thing I, I don't like about it is the, the way that this posts it posts right on the piston mechanism and makes it extraordinarily long but other than that I, I really enjoy uh, Twisby as a brand as well as the Diamond 580 because that really uh, was a launching pad for uh, for the rest of the year and the rest of my collection so there is the top 10 at March so moving into June of this year my top 10 list is quite different uh, I had moved from some of the entry-level pens into some of the next level pens and really started to discover what I, I really liked about some of these so as you can see from my original top 10 only three were left the Twisby 580, the Caveco Sport, and the Pilot Metropolitan was hanging on at number 10, I think, for sentimental reasons. But uh, coming in at number 9 is a Faber-Castell Loom. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite nibs in my entire collection. It has a very distinct feedback that is very unique. 
uh, if you blindfolded me, I could tell just from writing with this pen, I, I could feel this nib and I really, really like it. Uh, and it just has a different feeling than any other nib in my collection. And in, in the, for uh, $40, I think it's one of the best $40 pens that you could buy. So the Loom is, uh, came in at number nine. Then we had the Coveco Sport at number eight. And at number seven, we had the Copper Orange Limey All-Star, which is probably one of my favorite colors of any pen I own. It's, it's just a very nice orange color uh, and really liked it. Coming in at number six, we had the, the first pen that I purchased overseas and had shipped. So it was kind of the, my first experience dealing with a, an overseas, re, overseas retailer. And I purchased a Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Uh, and this is a, a magnificent nib. It has a soft medium nib, or I'm sorry, a fine medium nib. Uh, and it's one of my favorite nibs in my collection that I just uh, uh, really like the, the fine medium that this lays down. Uh, and, uh, and really enjoy the feeling of this pen and the way that it writes. So the Customer Heritage 92 came in at number six. At number five, I had the Pilot Vanishing Point. Uh, again, this was kind of my foray into some of the pens that are, are really, really popular. Uh, and I had heard a lot about the Vanishing Point and, uh, and really enjoyed it. And I, I have three of them now. And this was the, the very first one, the Gunmetal Black, that are Gunmetal Gray that I have. Number four was the Twisby Diamond 580. And then coming in at number three is the Lamy Studio Brushed Stainless. Um, this brushed stainless is one of my favorite coatings uh, on bodies on any of my pens. It just feels very comfortable, has a very unique feel to it. Uh, and I enjoy the way it writes. Uh, it, even though it uses the same nib as the uh, Safaris and the All-Stars, uh, that it, it doesn't quite feel like it. For some reason, at least on this particular pen, the, the nib feels a little bit nicer. And so uh, this is a pen that I, I, I really enjoy. So then, coming in at number two is a, another Lamy, but this one is a little more special. This is the Lamy 2000. Um, that the Lamy 2000 has been around for quite some time and, and really a classic style. And that um, this is one that I, I really enjoyed as well. I love the looks, love the feel, love the weight, love the way it writes, uh, love just about everything about it. Uh, and so coming in at number two was the Lamy 2000. And so then coming in at number one was at the time a pen that I didn't think that I would ever own, uh, which it seems like I've had a, a lot of those. But this is one that uh, I, I thought was going to be out of my range, but I was able to pick up a, uh, an older one, which is a Mont Blanc Meisterstück 146 Legrand. Uh, the uh, Legrand, I, I didn't want to get a Classique. I wanted, really wanted to own a Meisterstück 146, uh, but the, the Classique was just a little too thin in my hand, and I didn't want to spend that much money on a pen that I knew that I really wouldn't enjoy. And I was able to find a, uh, a Legrand here, and it's just amazing. I, I, I love this pen very, very much, and it's something I, I use almost on a weekly basis. Uh, typically on Mondays. Mondays are, I, I've deemed them to be Mont Blanc Mondays, and so I rotate through my Mont Blanc pens on Monday. But for a long time, this was my only one, uh, the only fountain that I had, and so it got a lot, a lot of use. And so uh, the Mont Blanc 146 Legrand came in at number one. Moving into September, my collection progressed even more, and as you can see, only five of the previous top ten pens remain in the list. Uh, and even my number one pen from just a couple of months previously, the uh, Twisby Diamond 580, is no longer in my top ten. So just six months later, it's been bumped out of the top ten. So we at number ten, we still had the Lamy Studio Brush Stainless. At number nine, we had the Pilot Vanishing Point. And then at number... Uh, at number eight, I discovered Sailors. And this is my first Sailor, which is a Siner, Sailor 911S. Uh, these nibs are amazing. Uh, similar to the, um, the, the Custom Heritage 92, uh, it, it just has a, a very, very nice nib to it that I enjoy that um, it is smooth, but yet has 
just the right amount of feedback that some of the, these sailor nibs are some of my uh, my favorite in my collection so um, I, I I bought this one and loved it very much uh, the sailor 911 s and then coming into number seven since I like that sailor so much I have a sailor professional gear uh, the the main difference here is it it the ends rather than being rounded are a little on the flat side um, or they are flat, not a little on the flat side, but this one has uh, a bit of uh, gold on its nib as well, uh, as far as gold inlay. Uh, and again, one that I really, really enjoyed. The the Sailor is is a pen company that has not disappointed me in regard to any of my purchases I've made from them. So then, at number six, we had the Custom Heritage 92, Bumped down to number five was the Lamy 2000. And then coming in at number four is one of my more unique pens that um, I, I, to this day, I really, really enjoy using and it's fun, which is the Lamy Dialogue 3. Uh, this is the capless pen that you twist and the nib comes out. Uh, it's really a fantastic writer. Uh, I really love the, the weight and feel to it. I think it is a bit of a polarizing pen. There's some people that are, really love the way it feels, uh, and then there's other people that don't. And I happen to be one of the people that, that really like it. So um, this is one of those pens that kind of makes me feel a little bit of joy every time I use it because I, I really enjoy using it. It's a lot of fun. So then, coming in at number three is my very first Pelican which was the Pelican Souverain M600 and um, it, I, I didn't realize how buttery smooth a nib could be until I used this pen. The, the nib on the Pelicans are, are, are just uh, amazing. Uh, it, it's really the next level smoothness and when you start writing with this you something clicks in your brain and you're like oh okay I get it that's what smooth is and that's what uh, an elite nib can feel like so um, the the M600 was one that I, I really really enjoyed plus this the the blue striping uh, on this pen is one of my favorite finishes on any pen I think it just looks fantastic um, I, I personally I like it better than the green or or uh, or the red that they have but um, I just really, really, really love this finish. It's one of my favorite finishes. So, that the Meister, the uh, Mont Blanc Meister Stuck 146 uh, came in uh, at number one, but now we'll look at number two, which is another Sailor, and this is the Sailor 911 Large. The moment I purchased the 911 uh, Small or the Standard, excuse me. Uh, I, I knew two things. One is I love sailor pens, and two is I needed to get the large uh, because the uh, the standard was just a slightly on the salt small side for me. But the 911 large is something that uh, is fits real my hand very nicely and is close to perfect. It's um, a, a nib that's amazing, just like any sailor pen and I, I really like the the size and the weight and the feel of this pen so this was the top 10 list for September so now we move into my final top 10 list for the year for my collection for 2015 and as you can see there's been some change again uh, since September so over the last three months is when I, I think I finally went off the rails in regard to my collection and uh, as you can see my number one pen from the three months previously the 146 Legrand has now been bumped down to um, to number three to number four so let's see what uh, what happened here so coming in at number 10 is the pilot custom and heritage 92 and then coming in at number nine is the Platinum 3776 Yamanaka, which is a, a special edition, limited edition series that they made. I have a review of this one on my, uh, on my channel. It, the, the nib is very unique, uh, very springy, but the, uh, the, the body itself, which resembles the waves of Lake Yamanaka near Mount Fuji in Japan, are, are, are very, very cool. So I enjoy this pen very, very much. So coming in at number eight 
is another very special pen which um, I need to do a review on and, and has an in-depth story but it is the Franklin Christoph model 66 in the ice so if you can tell that this has a, a real nice ice finish to it so it's not quite clear it's not a little bit translucent and it has a very very cool finish to it and this pin just about above any other demonstrator I have the the ink just looks amazing sloshing around in here and what I discovered when I was doing some research on some pens is that the Franklin Christoph company makes their pens about 45 minutes away from where I live so I needed to uh, place an order and go down to their uh, their factory and their place of business and was able to to meet Scott Franklin and uh, he graciously gave me a little tour of his facility and I picked up a pen and uh, it was amazing uh, and so again I'll uh, I'll do a review on this one at some point and uh, and have a lot of pictures of their facility on there but I really really like this uh, model 66 uh, it is uh, the nib on it is, is fantastic the Franklin Kristoff nibs and it looks amazing and as I said it's probably of all my demonstrators uh, it looks the best with the ink sloshing around it's just amazing so coming in at number seven we had the Lamy 2000 then at number six we had the Sailor 911 large at number five we had the Dialogue 3 at number four we had the Montblanc Meisterstück 146 Legrand and then now we get into the big boys Coming in at number three, I had the Pelican 1000. Um, I, again, this is another pen that I really didn't think that I would ever own, but there was a, uh, a European site that was having a significant sale on these pens, uh, and I couldn't necessarily pass up the, uh, the bargain. Uh, the nib on this pen is, is just stunning. It's huge. It's fantastically smooth, and, and it's just amazing. Uh, the pen is... Uh, worthy to be a, a flagship pen for for Pelican, it um, you know it's large, but not for me. It's not so large that uh, that it's cumbersome. So I, I really really enjoy using this pen. So then coming in at number two is the Montblanc Meisterstück 149. Uh, again, enormous nib on this, a number nine nib just stunning in its looks the gold the silver it, it looks fantastic um, it writes amazing I, I typically like medium nibs uh, and I got this one in a fine and it's perfect uh, I think a medium at least for me would have been too much the 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 fine nib on here is is outstanding so it, it again just like the Pelican M1000 it's really um, a worthy to be called a flagship pen uh, it is large but for me, it's not so large that it's uh, unwieldy. And, and I really, really enjoy the days that I uh, take that to work and use that. So, come down to my number one, my number one pen of 2015 is a Pelican M800. Of all of my pens in my collection, I think this Pelican M800 comes the closest to perfection. Um, and a perfect for... A pen is perfect for an individual. Uh, this might not be the perfect, perfect pen for everybody, but for me, it, it's really, really close to perfect. Um, it is actually, uh, to, be cl uh, to be clear, it's an M805. So an M800 would be, have the gold um, trim, and the M805 has the, uh, has the silver. So this is actually an M805. Uh, I really love the silver, actually more than the, the, the gold trim. Uh, the the blue stripe is, is one of the, probably my favorite features on any fountain pen. I just think it looks amazing. Uh, that I love the way that um, when you twist it around, you can kind of see through that as an ink window. I also like the fact that if you look up really closely and comp compare the lines, and then also compare them to any other Pelicans, that they're not perfect. It it, it just has a feeling to it like. The, the lines aren't necessarily 100% the same uh, in the line width varies just slightly not enough to make you think that it's a poor um, 
process in regard to their manufacturing, but it just adds a little bit of character to it, and, and I like that very much. And I noticed that on my uh, M600 as well. There's just a, a little bit of variance in there, which I like. But the, the size of this pen is perfect. Uh, the weight of it is fantastic. Uh, it, uh, uh, it fits great in my hand, and, uh, and, and the size and weight are exactly, if I was to design a pen, what it would be. So that came in for 2015 at number one. So we'll see what 2016 brings, and we'll see how much change there is going into, uh, into next year. But for now, there you have it, my top 10 pens of 2015. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye.